Hey everyone! Every day, the Uno Amalgam gets closer to completion. Every script of this series that I write gets me closer to my goal of combining every mechanically unique Uno version into one giant work of art. This project has come a long way, but things have changed over the course of this YouTube series as well. The longer I've gone on, the more I've added over 10 UNO versions per episode. And I gotta say, it's kind of addicting. And when I was able to eliminate over 100 UNO versions from my list in episode 12, ooh, I would be lying if I said that didn't feel great. I've been chasing that high ever since. Which is why in the last episode, I added 30 versions and eliminated another 20. That video was a lot of work, though. While I'm definitely not suffering from burnout with this project, that last episode did leave me a bit worn out. Tired. Would it really be that difficult to make larger episodes like that in the future as well? It could. But what if I wanted to include more than 30 UNO versions in one video? What then? My mind was racing. How could I experience that sweet hit of dopamine again without exhausting myself? And then it hit me. <laughs> it was so simple. The answer was right in front of me all along. <laughs> I knew what I had to do. Uno versions of the world, you are not safe. Pray to whatever Ubisoft Uno sealed god you believe in that you're unique enough to make your way into the amalgam. Believe me, that is where you want to be. After all, <laughs> if you're not there, you're eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into the eliminations, we gotta do some clarifying. It's clarification time! Yippee! Some of the most common questions I got in the last episode revolved around the specific mechanics I included there. Be sure to check the rules document because I have made some teeny tiny changes to some mechanics in order for them to function well in chemic cards. Mostly just quality of life improvements and small specifications when necessary, honestly. Another thing that a lot of people commented about is the 9 and 3 fourths version of the Sorting Hat card. I'll just say right now that this card will not have 9 and 3 fourths on it. It will have the number 9.75 instead. This number would of course be functionally identical. This change is being made for several reasons and I want to clarify this as well. The number is not being changed because I'm afraid of legal trouble with JK Rowling. Legally, you cannot copyright a number, but you can trademark a number if it's part of one of your brand's names or logos. So thankfully, even if I left the number as 9 and 3 fourths, I wouldn't have to be worried, because I'm not using any official Wizarding World artwork or the name 9 and 3 quarters in the final game. I'm American. I'm simply using the number, it's not meant to represent a fictional place or franchise. The reason I'm safe would be the same reason every math textbook company in the world is safe to use the 9 and 3 fourths number without legally wronging JK Rowling. The reasons I'm changing the number are as follows. 1. Using decimals instead of fractions is more scientific and fits the theme of chemic cards much better. 2. I won't have to make any new characters for my font because I already have the necessary ones to spell 9.75. Finally, 3, the most important one, is that I'm following through with my promise I made last episode and a few of the earlier episodes as well. Chemic cards will not have any trace of outside branding. And since that number is tied directly to several parts of the Wizarding World, a brand, I have changed it to suit its new environment, chemic cards, for the better. Even if it is ultimately just a number. Also, I don't think it's a very hot take to say that J.K. Rowling is a terrible and often delusional human being, and while I have immense respect for the actors and actresses who played roles in the Harry Potter films, 
as well as the talented film and set crew who helped produce them, and the people at Mattel who designed the mechanics and necessary artwork for the various Uno Harry Potter versions, most of which are just screenshots from the films, I have absolutely no respect for J.K. Rowling, and I don't want to directly represent her in this project. So, I would just like to restate, there will be absolutely no outside brand representation in the final Chemicards game. Judging by the recent UNO fandom reveal live event thing, we aren't even done with the Wizarding World either, so brace yourselves, I guess. There's one last thing I want to talk about. Not really a clarification, more like a desperate call for help. There are some UNO versions out there that are threatening to become lost media. Despite the best efforts of me, the Discord server, and a few of you in the YouTube comments, there are some UNO versions that have absolutely no information about themselves on the internet. What's annoying is that we know they exist, but there's no information on their rules to be found anywhere. So I'm going to leave a list of UNO versions in the description that I have absolutely no information on. If you, or anyone you know, may have information regarding the unique rules of these versions, I beg you to email me pictures of the rules and the packaging if possible. Not just for the sake of this project, but for the sake of preserving the knowledge of these shattered pieces in UNO's history. My email is in the YouTube channel description. A large chunk of these versions are related to various universities or colleges. So if you attend that specific university, or if you know someone who does or did, you might have a better chance of getting info on those versions. Another large chunk of these versions are sports-related. Some are tied to specific states, countries, sports, or even specific players of those sports. If you live in areas where those specific sports, teams, or players are popular, you may have a better chance of knowing where to find more information. Yet another large group of these versions were exclusively released internationally, and are therefore harder to find and read if you live in the United States and only read English like I do. Many of these versions are from Japan specifically, but there are others scattered all over the world as well. If you live in the countries that these versions were released in, you have a much greater chance of being able to find them than I ever would. There's also just a bunch of random versions of UNO that aren't related in any way, but they're usually vintage and there's no info to be found on them on the internet. So please, if you have any information regarding any versions I've listed in the description, please email me. Search everywhere, ask your family, check your local antique stores. Do not, I repeat, do not annoy university officials or sports organizations or anyone else asking them about an UNO version from three decades ago. And don't spend money on an UNO version just to discover its rules unless you feel comfortable doing so. Thank you in advance for the effort you're willing to put into this silly project. Now, if I get to the end of this project and I only have UNO versions with no information about them on my list, I will proceed to the production phase of developing this game without them. I can't afford to wait forever, and there's a good chance that a few of these versions will never be found. That being said, if Chemicards has been produced and has succeeded, and more official versions are recovered from the depths of history, I'll be sure to add them as an expansion. Wink. Clarification time over. It's time to get to the elimination list. Like I said last time I did a video like this, if any of the versions I list here actually do have something mechanically unique to Chemicards and I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. Our first category is UNO versions that won't be added because they feature different card sizes or shapes. I should note that a few of these versions are just smaller versions of normal existing UNO versions. I haven't covered some of these normal ones yet, but I will eventually. I'm just getting their resized counterparts out of the way, so I don't have to worry about them on my big list. However, if it turns out there is something mechanically different between the resized and normal versions, please tell me. Here we go! Uno Mini Capsule Game Japan Dos Mini Capsule Game Japan Uno Barbie Mini Capsule Game Japan Uno Hot Wheels Mini Capsule Game Japan Uno Mini 50 Years of Being Wild Capsule Game Japan 
Uno Mini 50th Anniversary Icon Series 1971 Capsule Game Japan Uno Mini Party Favors Uno Mini Mini Uno Uno Pocket Giant Uno Jurassic World Dominion Uno Mini McDonald's Japan Dos Go That's all for that category and on to the next. Uno versions that are unofficial or non-existent. Let's talk about all of these ones individually. Uno Star Wars The Force Awakens is simply fake. I, I mean, look at it. Uno Jodha Akbar, originating from India, is also fake, but they were really tricky with it. They put Mattel's seal on the front of the box. But if you look at the back, the Mattel name is intentionally misspelled. This is actually how you can identify a lot of fake Uno versions out there. There's also these Uno Ultraman sets which are so blatantly fake. Finally, Tycoon is a card game in the same genre as Uno, but obviously it's not officially published by Mattel, so uh, yeah, no. Finally, we have The Big List. So many Uno versions with nothing unique. It's honestly a beautiful thing to see. Deep breath... <sighs> Uno AFL Uno Pocket Lipton Uno Pocket Barbie Uno Chicago Cubs Special Edition 2004 Uno Detective Conan Uno McDonald's Fireman Sam Uno Junior DC League of Super Pets Uno Game Demo Flash slash HTML5 Uno Adelaide Crows Uno Carlton Uno Melbourne Demons Uno West Coast Eagles Uno Western Bulldogs Uno A Bathing Ape Uno Drew House Uno Cartel Uno Vivita Uno Pocket All Wild Uno Pocket Haribo Uno Pocket Kinder Regal Uno Pocket Little Uno Pocket Nestle Nesquik King Size Uno My First Uno Bob the Builder My First Uno Angelina Ballerina my first Uno, Clifford the Big Red Dog. My first Uno, Corduroy. My first Uno, Fimbles. My first Uno, Fireman Sam. My first Uno, Mr. Men, Little Miss. My first Uno, Octonauts. My first Uno, Sesame Street 1991. My first Uno, Sesame Street 2000. My first Uno, Sesame Street, Elmo. My first Uno, Yo Gabba Gabba. Uno Junior Coloring Uno Waddingtons Uno Disney Japan 1998 Uno Disney Japan 2005 Uno Splash Finding Dory Uno Chota Beam Uno South Aussie with Kazi SA Icons Uno 1990s Uno Canada 150th Anniversary Uno Colombia Uno Costa Rica Uno Ecuador Uno El Salvador Uno Honduras Uno Philosophy de Lorenzo Serafini Uno Province of Canada Uno Toys R Us 50 Years Forever Fun Uno Chic Uno Royal Uno Pocket Superfoodies Uno Junior UK Uno Deluxe 50th Anniversary Reissue Uno Collector's Edition 1982 Uno Mini San Carlo Jr. Uno NFL Greatest Stars Brett Favre Uno Super Bowl San Francisco 49ers Uno It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown 2009 Uno Pocket Walcor Uno Pocket Meligati <laughs> Yes! This is fantastic! Look at how many Uno versions have been eliminated. Originally, this episode was going to be about surpassing the 400 version mark, but we've made a lot more progress than that. In this video, I covered 77 official versions of Uno. That means that the total number of versions represented in the amalgam is currently 473. That's right, Mattel. You think you can reveal over 10 Uno versions at once and intimidate me? How foolish of you. Your silly marketing strategies don't scare me. Anyway, those versions aren't quite available yet at the time of writing this, so that means I'm about 72% of the way done with combining every Uno version ever. How exciting! 
I guess that kinda puts a timer on anyone who's out there searching for Uno Lost Media. Don't worry, you still have plenty of time, and I'll continue to do my own research in the meantime as well. Obviously no new cards were added in this episode, so we're still sitting at about 842 cards. There's a good chance we'll reach 1,000 cards by the end of this, but there's also honestly a chance we won't. And there's nothing wrong with that. It is once again thank you time. Firstly, I want to thank all of my subscribers. I recently made it past 30,000 subscribers and I am beyond thankful. I did a community post about this recently as well, so be sure to read that if you want to be thanked again. I'm so happy that I have such a supportive community to interact with about things that I enjoy doing. You're all awesome. Thank you for being here. Next, I gotta thank the Amalgamation Donation Club for their support as well. A special thank you goes out to I Like Pancakes, Fallen Angel Viox, Splashy Flame, Skyroll of the Stars, Elias Stenbach, 5689, The Golden Block, H2O Wizard, and Omicromium. You all rock, but you already knew that, right? Thank you for your support. With that, I think it's time to end the video. This was a shorter one because there wasn't actually anything to add. <laughs> the next episode will be a bit more substantial content-wise, so don't worry. Like the video if you, in fact, liked the video. Have a good whatever, and I'll talk to you next time.